talk about when you see something that says, and I'll put another like a little one next to it because it's the first translation. Um, X is what percent of Y? Now I'm going to move this red line over so we have a little bit more room. And when you see that, the way that I would like you to handle it, sorry, I'm just going to mute a few people here. Um, the way I'd like you to handle it is I would like you to say, you know, X over Y times 100 is equal to what? Now notice I could have said X is what fraction of Y, and I simply would have said X over Y equals what? I could have said X is what ratio to Y, and I would have said X over Y uh, is equal to what? And then there's other tr translations. You know, X is 20% of Y. And in that case, you would say X equals 0.2Y. Now, keep in mind, you can always break these things into fractions if you so wish. I think sometimes fractions make sense, sometimes decimals make sense. Really, it's about practicing and getting super comfortable and choosing what, what works best for you. Some students, I noticed that decimals work, and some students, I've noticed that um, fractions work. Now, it gets a little bit harder when we get to a place like this where we would say X is 20% less than Y. Now, there's kind of a long way to deal with this and a short way to deal with this. Um, the long version, we don't even have to bother with. I think just knowing how to do the short version is going to make a lot of sense. You would say X equals 0.8Y. So if anyone's questioning this idea, um, think about it this way. If you were at the store, you were buying something that's $100 regular price. Let's say it's on sale for 20% off. The final price would be 80. And then finally, <clears throat> X is 20% greater than Y. It's X equals 1.2Y. Now, what's nice about all this is these are things that you can totally get memorized, and that way when you see them on the test, you're not going to have to think twice about them. And in fact, if you check out our equation guide or our kind of cheat sheet that I'm sure most of you have seen on the resources page of your dashboard, we have some really good percent stuff worth memorizing. We're also going to get into percents with variables later today, but I wanted to start off just with this, and then we could kind of go from there. So. The first thing I want to do here um, is I want to get into a pretty good word problem. It's not a tremendously difficult problem, but as I said, I want to bring in some of the things that we once did in ratios, or at least you guys have probably learned in ratios, and I want to then apply it to percents. So with that said, let's start with this question. As always, I'm giving everyone about two minutes. When you get your answer, put it in the public chat box, and that way we can uh, chat about the result, and then we'll move to the next question. So I'll give everyone a few minutes.
Hey everyone, just, just a reminder, please stay muted so people aren't distracted while they're working through this stuff. Okay, so that was about two minutes. Um, so this is an interesting question. Um, most of you are kind of beating around the bush with the right answer. Um, hopefully it didn't take long for all of you to see that the answer here is either going to be C or E. Um, one of the nice things I like to do in this problem is initially set up some pretty good variables um, for each of our years. Notice we're going to follow some of the translations that we were talking about um, in the last question to make sure that everyone's following it the right way. So the first thing we want to do here is say, okay, we're going to say A is the um, income in 1856, B in 1857, and then 1858 here. And we're trying to say 1858 is what percent of 1857, so we're saying C over B is equal to what? So now we're just doing a bunch of translations here. Um, 1857, and we're going to kind of go through the two statements because we know individually they don't work. Statement one is saying 1857 is 20% of 1856, so B is 0.2A. And we see that in statement two, 1858 is 60% of 1856, which is 0.6a. Now, for any of you who have been to our previous webinars or who have read our ratios chapter, you know that the goal here is just to get everything in terms of the same variable. Notice we have successfully do that, have done that. And, and by the way, everyone, um, this is a data sufficiency question, so we don't put the answer choices in the data sufficiency questions. Um, solely based on the fact that we just want to have everyone have the data sufficiency choices memorized. So moving forward, we get 0.2a over 0.6a, um, or excuse me, I did that backwards. We would, let me flip those arrows. We have 0.6a over Point two a, these cancel. Point six over point two. We see we have enough information. We don't have to go further than that. So with that said, um, you are in a position to get an answer of C. You got everything in terms of the same variable. The variables drop, and you're left with your answer. So hopefully this wasn't too bad for, for everyone. Um, I do want to do one other type that's similar to this. Um, and I think, you know, if we can start to get into this mindset of the fact that we're trying to get every variable in terms of the, or every equation in terms of the same variable, these can e easily drop and you'll have what you need. So I'm going to give everyone another problem to do here. I'll give everyone two minutes and we will talk about it. Put your answer in the chat box.
Okay, so it was about two minutes there, and I, I do see that we're getting some differing answers. Um, it's funny, the answers that we're getting are boiling down to C or E, and when I do these questions, this particular question with students, um, when they get it wrong, they're generally choosing C or E. Now, of course, I'm not going to tell you what the right answer is yet, because I want to go through it. So the first thing you want to do here is you want to set up some equations. P is 500% of Q, so you would say P equals 5Q. Then next, you would want to say Q equals 4Z because Q is 400% of Z. The next thing we have here is we have Z is what percent of P? So Z over P times 100 is equal to what? So the goal here is to get everything in terms of the same variable. You'll notice that the common variable here is variable Q, and you'll notice that P is already in terms of Q. So the only second thing we have to do is we have to say Q over 4 equals Z. So once we do that, we can put Q over 4 in for Z. We can put 5Q in for P. And we can say Q over 4 divided by 5Q times 100 is equal to what? Notice when we flip and multiply, and this is where I think people had issues, the Qs cancel. But you notice that you're multiplying the whole thing by 100. 20 divided by 100 is 5%. So you have to make sure you're multiplying by that extra 100. Um, so with that in mind, we are going to keep doing some more of these types of questions. So hopefully that wasn't too bad for everyone. Um, I do want to get into kind of some percent greater, percent less problems. And I also want to do that using some variables moving forward here. We're probably going to do a little less on data sufficiency um, and more on some other things. And uh, I think someone's not muted, so if, if, uh, can everyone check to make sure they're muted, please? There we go. OK. So the next thing I want to do is a really good play on percent greater type problem. So I'm going to give everyone another two minutes, and we're going to kind of talk about a different process here. So two minutes, and then we'll chat about this.
Okay, that was about two minutes there. Um, now, I do see a lot of different answers here, which again is good. Um, and I see a lot of people putting the trap answer here, which is good. Um, so there's a lot that we can talk about. So the, the first thing to kind of establish in any of these types of problems um, is when you have your answer choices in percentage form, or ratio form or fraction form, you do always have the option to plug in a real number. Now, whether or not you go on that option is totally up to you. Um, this is a personal preference that you kind of have to think about because sometimes people like using variables and sometimes people don't. I don't care either way. Um, but this is one of those cases where the more you practice, the more you'll kind of figure that out. The other thing that's interesting about this problem here is you don't need to create multiple variables, which actually is pretty awesome because, remember, the less variables you have in any problem, the better. And what you need to understand here, too, is we're not dealing with any sort of algebra. We're just dealing with a percentage of something to something else. So the, the first thing I would do in this problem is I would say, okay, well, we're talking about 2001 is the initial start date. So let's say we call 2001, I'll just change the color. Let's say we call 2001 X. Now, the next thing you see is that in 2005, I'm ignoring the month date, the price is 5% greater. So based on our initial chart, we could say that this is 1.05 X. Now, this is where things get a little bit tricky. So we go fast forward to um, 2009. That's the final date that we care about here. And in 2009, we say that it gets 200% greater. Now, I saw what some of the answer choices were that people put. A lot of people said 210%. Now, there's an issue with 210% because we don't really want to multiply 1.05 by 2, which is 200%, because it's not saying 200% of, it's saying 200% greater. And when you're doing a percent greater, you're always adding 1 to the original percent. And again, this goes back to us increasing the original amount by 5%. Notice we did 1 plus 0.05 which is 1.05. So what we have to do with the 200% greater is not multiply by 2, but multiply by 3, giving us, let me make that multiplication sign a little different, gives us 3.15x. Of course, that would be 315%. So clearly we know that the GMAT likes to lay traps for our different answer choices. Um, and with that in mind, you know, you want to be in a situation where um, you are, you have all of these small rules down pat because it only takes one error to get off track.
And unfortunately, if you know 99.9% .9 of a problem and the 0.1 or 0.01% of, uh, of the problem you get wrong, let's say, um, you're going to be in a situation where, unfortunately, there's no extra credit. There's no partial credit. So you're going to get it wrong. So get all these little things down. Make sure you are good in your process. And I think you're going to be in a really good spot. Um, now, with that said, I want to move on to the another problem. Now, someone just asked, why did I choose three here? Well, the reason I chose three is because the translation of 200% greater is not two, it's three. So that is something you want to get down uh, pat. So just like if I said 400% greater, you would be multiplying it by five. If I say 100% greater, you're multiplying it by two, et cetera, et cetera. Now again, if it was 200% of, you would multiply it by two, but it didn't say that. So I want to move on to doing some percent translations with variables. This is something that we can do another percent translation chart with, but I want to give everyone a problem first, then we'll do the percent translation chart, and then we'll come back and do the answer to this. So I'll give everyone a few minutes, and then we can go from there. Okay, so that was about two minutes. 
Um, this is a very good question because we're dealing with something uh, very new, and that is percent translations with uh, variables. Now, the nice thing is that the process um, in working with this is incredibly, incredibly systematic. So um, you will be able to master this. And yes, it seems harder. No, I don't want you plugging in. Um, so what we're going to do here is we're going to set up a quick translation chart. And I'm going to do it on a different page. And we're going to do three separate translations. And these are things that, again, everyone can take to the bank. If you can't copy them down in real time here, again, go to our cheat sheet. I like to call it a cheat sheet on steroids um, in the resources page of our dashboard. And it'll all be there, because I help make it. <laughs> so this is definitely something that I like to teach. Um, so here's our three translations. X is N percent of Y. Now, remember, we're not in a situation where we can really use decimals with variables. So if we go back to our first whiteboard, if I can find it, um, we said X is 20% of Y. Notice we said X is 0.2Y. But the equivalent of 0.2Y is 20 over 100Y. Now, obviously, there's no sense in writing that because that's not simplified. And there's no sense in writing unsimplified values when you can easily do the conversion in your head. So back here, we would say X is N over 100 times Y. So pretty simple. The next is X is N percent less than Y. Now, of course, this is where things get a little trickier. In this particular instance, we have x equals 1 minus n over 100 times y. Now, you can leave it in this form, but you can also combine the 1 with the n over 100. And if you do that math, it would end up being 100 minus n over 100 times y. And then this would be x is n percent greater than y. So x equals 1 plus n over 100 times y. Or in other words, x equals 100 plus n over 100 times y. So I don't think any of that is that bad. I think these are all pretty doable translations. I think that if anyone, you know, if you have issues right now looking at it, memorize it. I mean, it's not that bad. So what you're also going to find is that it relates pretty much identically to this question. And as, as I scroll through the answer choices, um, you're going to see that um, the process in dealing with this is going to be quite similar. So we see that we're starting off with uh, an item. It's, it's D dollars. And we are marking it down X percent. So how do you mark something down X percent? Well, you do 1 minus X over 100. Now, the next thing is we're marking it up X percent. We're going to then multiply that by 1 plus x over 100. There's something I want to be very clear about so that no one falls for this trap on the GMAT. If you take an item, and you guys can practice this with real numbers later if you so wish. If you take an item and you mark it down, let's say, 20%, and then you mark it back up 20%, you don't get the original value that you were dealing with. So the first answer that's a trap here is definitely D. So it doesn't wipe out the percentage mark down versus percentage mark up. Um, obviously, yes, there's math behind that. But you know the reality is we just want to know that that's the case so we're not falling in any traps. Now, the issue with leaving this in this format here is that 
it doesn't really look like there are answer choices. And anytime you're dealing with a simplification problem on the GMAT, you always want to do your best job of trying to mimic the answer choices, because there's multiple ways to simplify a question. So with that said, it makes very good sense to get your common denominators. And now we're in a much better spot to be able to finish this. What's even better is if you look at the numerator here of our two fractions, you'll notice the good old difference of squares, something that I love to talk about, something that we teach a lot, and it's something that can be used in multiple places, not just when you're dealing with the quadratics chapter, let's say. So strategically using the difference of squares, this becomes 100 squared minus x squared over 100 times 100, which is 10,000. So 100 squared gives us um, 10,000 minus x squared over 10,000. So while this question may appear super, super challenging, um, I'm hoping that everyone looks at this and says, you know what, it's really just testing us on these translations. I have these translations down. I can successfully deal with them. And then this becomes you know, a pretty easy, manageable problem. So I want to do one more question testing on this, and then we're going to move on to kind of percent change, percent increase, percent decrease, um, and then we'll keep going until quarter of. So I'll give everyone a problem here. Okay, so that was about two minutes there. So I would definitely say that this problem is definitely a little bit harder than the last one, um, just based off of, really just based off of the, kind of the way that the problem is listed out. So it's no big deal. Everyone can, should be able to successfully deal with this. Um, but, you know, you do want to take your time and sort through it. And look look at really one component at a time here. So 
we are told that a shirt is on sale for 60% less than its original price of $100. So what we know from everything we've done before is that 60% less of 100 is like the same thing as multiplying it by 0.4. So that's going to give us 40. Um, the next thing we have here is that it says that sale price, which is the $40, is Z percent less than what it would have cost. Okay, so we know Z percent less is 1 minus or 100 than what it would have cost if the shirt was on sale for X percent of its original price. X percent, of course, is X over 100. The original price of it is, of course, 100. So you'll notice here that the hundreds immediately, immediately cancel out. So that's the first thing. Then we're left with basically all of this here. Now the key in this question is it's saying what is the value of x in terms of z. So we do want to isolate x and we want to do it the quickest way we possibly can, which means we're going to want to bring the 1 minus z over 100 over to the other side. However, before doing that, I think it would be a wise decision to get one denominator, and you'll see why in a second. So now, when we divide this out, we end up with 40 over 100 minus z over 100 equals x. And then, of course, as everyone knows, we need to flip and multiply. So that becomes 40 over 1 times, actually I don't want to use a times symbol, let's use a dot, 100 over 100 minus z equals x. Now, I'm sure most of you can see where this problem um, is headed. You know, really the only answer choice that's logically going to complete this is answer choice E as in Edward. So you see we do have a question here, the translation of the second sentence into numbers. Okay, so it says the sale price of the shirt is Z percent less. Okay, so Z percent less is this than what it would have cost if the shirt was on sale for X percent of. Okay, so there's your X percent of. And then there's of the original price, that's the 100. Okay, so again, Hopefully it wasn't too bad. I know these things um, take time to, you know, master, but I do believe that everyone here can do it. You know, I didn't have it right away. It took me time, but I promise if you work hard at it, you should be able to get this right. Now, the last thing I want to do here is I want to go through really one last question. This is dealing with percent change. So I'll give everyone a minute or two to start this, and then we will go from there. So take a look at this question, and we'll go through it in a second. This is testing percent change. Okay, so it's about a minute. Um, I do want to wrap up this question before we get to this, before we get to the end, rather. So this is a percent change question, and we know percent change is new price minus old price divided by old times 100. 
and it's saying what was the percent change of the stock from Monday to Tuesday. So that means that Tuesday is the old price, which is Y, and the uh, new price, or excuse me, Monday is the old price is X, Tuesday is the new price, which is Y. So in other words, we would want to say Y minus X over X times 100. Well, although it may be tempting to say A or C, you'll notice that with A, we only have the numerator of our percent change formula, so that's not enough. But when you look at statement 2, which I'll put in a different color, you get 3Y equals X. Notice if we plug the 3Y in for X, we get Y minus 3Y over 3Y, or negative 2y over 3y. The y's cancel. Of course, we're left with negative 2 thirds times 100, so that's going to be sufficient. The answer is B. So hopefully this was a good ending question for everyone. What I want everyone to see here is that, again, we just needed to get everything in terms of one variable. The variables drop, and we're left with a percent change. So this wouldn't have been any different if it said, you know, Y is what percent of X, Y is what ratio of X, et cetera. So for those of you who are kind of fully into the course at this point, if you struggled with anything today, go through the percents chapter, do a lot of practice questions, look at the equation sheet. It's all there. It can all be memorized. It can all be learned. But I think we did cover some key skills. So hopefully everyone was able to kind of pick up on some of those and successfully apply them. So until next week, I just want to thank everyone for coming. And if you have any questions or concerns, feel free to reach out to me or Scott, our CEO. Um, but thanks again, everyone. And we will talk to you all soon. Bye.